big and more and just just more I suppose mm. just more 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 that was it how far would you go how far would you go for that more how far would I go killer killer podcast killer killer official dot com THTC the UK's leading ethical streetwear label organically grown and ethically built garments from hemp organic cotton and other sustainable materials 2019 is their 20th anniversary year join me with THTC as a killer killer podcast sponsor celebrating music social activism hemp and street culture THTC eco fashion redefined since 1999 Instagram UK frontline Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we're here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. Um, and it's always a pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Killer Keller podcast. Um, welcome to the Keller Dome. Subscribe, tell a friend, tell a friend. Big shout out to Graffiti Kings. Um, big shout out to everyone out there that's subscribing and sharing and spreading the love. Hit the bell, subscribe button. If you've just joined us, this is Street Culture, it's fine, it's music and more. That's how we roll. Um, I am the conduit, Killer Keller, and here to help uh, unmask this story with a mask <laughs> on his face. <laughs> exactly how we like it over on a Killer Keller podcast. A man that I, I've kind of bumped into so many d- different areas of my career and uh, and knowing so little about my brother mighty chang inside the place what That's are you saying how are you me up man good man yeah <laughs> how's it been good it's been hot sweaty and locked down yeah but apart from that it's been good yeah just for reference he doesn't wear this get up all the time no. i mean that would just be like <laughs> xmas central wouldn't it <laughs> especially in this weather <laughs> yeah, exactly exactly it's graffiti weather isn't it is it graffiti weather for you in the your mask mind? is the lockdown mask is, is pure graffiti weather what is what is my it's, suited graph weather do you i'd reckon? say winter snow winter hoods yeah, cold yeah, yeah. no one about no one uh, wants to go out apart yeah. from nutcase graffiti writers. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. You know who you are. Um, <laughs> yeah, definitely winter. Definitely yeah, winter. yeah, it is a winter thing, isn't it? Um, if you're orbiting around the mid '90s in the graph world, TFH, you scholar, dangerous levels of of graph that uh, that I just felt like you were in your own. You and Scholar were kind of in your own world, and that was that always appealed to me. It didn't feel like you were from the the, the conventional, yeah, London scene, yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, we we were from outside of London, and that's where we started our kind of journey in it. And then we kind of met various people within, you know, Blink and Touch and Gash, Tense, all those guys. Hold tight. And they kind of yeah yeah hold tight all those mm. guys, and they kind of brought us into into that kind of world. And that's how we kind of yeah got into. That's how that began. side of things. Did, did you grow up with with Scholar? Was were you guys? Yeah, tight? I, um, I used to know his sister years ago. We used to knock around together, and she said, "Oh, my little brother's into Graf. Um, you should meet him." He's only like a little kid back then, because like back then I was it was a three year age difference. But but when you're that young, it's quite a lot, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, um, totally. Yeah. And I remember meeting him the first time. We did a track side. He was in his school uniform. I was like, "Still, guys, really young. Really, really dangerous." Yeah, no, no, he did. He did. <laughs> <laughs> and then um yeah we did a track so it all went good and then yeah just from then just did more and more and more and kind of delved more into london and yeah so where, yeah. You, where are you originally from without you know being too um, specific outside of west london kind of like west london and then a few steps beyond really like, yeah so far west really? so how did you how did you get into it yourself well, then well into graph yeah um, yeah i remember when i was about 12 i used to read hip-hop connection and there used to be these two or three pages in the back that had motu bando kind of like subway art kind of um mm. kind of old school graph and that just got me into it and then for years i used to take pictures mm. walk around london on my own just taking pictures my friends thought i was nuts i used to get up at like eight in the morning so i was like scared of getting robbed i was like I had my camera on me little dude walking around all these estates and um, i used to love taking pictures of graph for years and years and years i never actually did it i just took pictures and documented it and then um yeah i met, I met scholar and then we started kind of actually kind of doing it the law of averages of you meeting up with someone like, well, a, a, a mutual that is into graph. I mean, by the sounds of it, you were very much an isolated kind of character. Your friends thought it was a little bit Yeah, tricky. I was, yeah. Really? I was definitely on my own. I was like a very solitary character. Right. Even actually when I first started doing graph, I used to just paint on my own. Really? Yeah, the first two or three years I remember just See, painting that's on how my I own. imagine... And I know that sounds... It, it couldn't be further from the truth, by the way. He's such a don and great to hang out with. But like... 
I remember when I first bumped into you at Bongo, Mr. Yeah, Bongo. Yeah, I remember that, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like 97, 98, was it? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Outside, and then my mate Lech turns around and goes, that's fucking Chang. I was like, get the fuck out of <laughs> You know what I mean? Um, on your own, you know, just on your own, quite shy. Yeah, maybe, perhaps, yeah, yeah. From what I remember. Yeah. But I was always like a bit of a... I want to be friends with everybody, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Still applies now. No, I remember really that. I remember that day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That is, it, it's all sepia, isn't it? It's just, but it, but it happens, and it like it just sinks into your psyche. Like everything you do when you're younger so it seeps in a lot more deeper, doesn't it? And you just need that little click to remember it, then it all comes flooding back. Like when I spoke to you on the phone the other day, you said, you remember that time at Bongo's? And I'd totally forgotten about it, and then it just <laughs> comes flooding back, yeah. But before we even come on, we were talking about, like, early 90s, you know, house dance music programmes and shit yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. And like you were saying then, just before, you, you know, you, you, we got ready, you were like, yeah, actually, we wouldn't even have had this conversation had we not having applied ourselves to doing a podcast. No, exactly. Mm -hmm. But you might have forgotten about it yeah. if you hadn't had that conversation, so yeah. it's all good. That shit's super important. Yeah, and these podcasts even as well, just for just for remembering all the little stuff, not just the graph, but the the lifestyles, the the kind of adventures around it as well. Yeah, that you forget about. Like exactly. I get sent photos that I have no recollection of ever doing it. Oh just, mate, uh, I don't doubt it. It's just it's just weird. Yeah, so it's good to yeah, it's good to document it. So that was actually come. been your. I guess the equivocal is when someone sends me a flyer and says, "Oh, I remember seeing you at so 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 so," and I'm like, "Yeah, I can't, I can't yeah. remember." It's it. Weird, isn't it? Cause yeah. I mean, it's quite a big thing to do. a you yeah. know, I do a gig, I suppose, and it's, yeah. it's, it's you have to like not remember it. It's like. I know, that's <laughs> fucked, isn't it? But I guess in the same stretch sense, w w when you go and do, like, uh, uh, some still or you d track sides or, you know, you go up to those highest heights of d delivering a fucking dub somewhere on a roof or something. Yeah. Uh, you, it's hard to forget that, isn't it? Or is it? Yeah, I think you say that, but there's some times I've seen photos of stuff that we've done that's been, you know, quite kind of hot spots and I've just totally forgotten doing it. I don't know if it's because we were kind of blazing a lot around the time or or it was so long ago. But yeah, you do. Really? Yeah, you put it you put it away. It's weird. Were you a blazer? Was, was, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was always part and part of going out on missions. Was it? Yeah. It was a big part. Yeah. Did it yeah. make it hard for because I mean, not that I'm suggesting you've you've stopped. Yeah. But oh, with course. those two things how running hand in hand, that must have been like a double kind of how'd you stop this? You know, like blazing <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. It comes it was, down now, I suppose. Yeah. It was, um, it just always went hand in hand. I don't know if all the people I was with, because I used to blaze before I started uh, writing, mm -hmm. and then um, all the people I was around, it was just always about, it's kind of added yeah. to the yeah. intensity of it all and the anxiousness yeah. of it all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you were going around on the uh, trains um, and you were, because I was t t on the Cosa podcast, he, him and Tate were explaining that he, they used to take sh photos, yeah. you know, and trade trade the flicks yeah. and whatnot like how deep did you used to go into the you know into the photography side of things and uh, capturing oh, the images early like ridiculously deep it used to kind of like for a period it used to rule my weekends I used to get up I used to go as far as like Woolwich there was a Hall of Fame in Woolwich I remember um I used to go to Tufnell Park Tottenham just all over London on my own just not for anyone else I didn't, I didn't mm. trade with anyone I just mm. had these photo albums I used to just get a new photo album fill it up go out again fill it up fill it up um you still yeah, got them now I've still got them now, yeah. Crazy! Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just this weird obsession. Wow. And not, and not just pieces, like little bombed walls or little tags I saw, just the whole, I don't know what it was, it was just this thing that I had to, I had to do. What's the feeling you think when you, what's the feeling you have when you think about that right now? Because there's only a way to really explain it, because like, perhaps you can't, you can't find the motivation, but what was the feeling when you were doing well, it? Can you feel that? Yeah, it was really, it was um, a feeling of excitement. Yeah. Like, you know, today people, their first encounter with graph might be on Instagram. Mm. And it's all good Instagram, it's great for certain things, but mm. I think if I if I had my first encounter with graph on Instagram, I don't know if I'd be so hooked. Mm. It was going out there, you know, you, mm. like you don't know what you're gonna find around the next corner, you mm. don't know what you're gonna bump into. Mm. It's that whole excitement, like the sounds, the places, the people, mm. where the graph was, it was just, that, that was all part of it for me, and going on the mission to find it. Mm. I think the culture that it came from, it, it celebrated the not just the act but the person behind it. I know that feeling you're talking about. It, to be in front of a tag at the age we were, to, to see a Chang tag in front of me, it 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 put me in the place of that person has stood exactly where I'm standing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And he did that. Yeah. 
and they were seeing this they were kind of breathing the same air I'm breathing yeah, yeah, smelling yeah. the same smells the same absolutely yeah. yeah. it used to just it drove me to obsession where I was just like yeah maybe I'll, maybe I'll meet these guys yeah. or yeah, I say exactly the same as me exactly <laughs> the same like I used to work on um, Portobello Road every um, every week with my dad. I used to run an antique store, and I used to go up there every morning to set up at half five. And then after we'd set up, I used to go around for a walk around the area around Latimer Road. You know, trellick all the all the spots and mm. being there the week before, and then and the next week as new grafter. Like they've been there like since I've been here, and there's been a new a oh. new piece that's been done in the last week. It's used to yeah, blow my mind. Blows your mind, doesn't yeah. it? Especially in that area, it was just such a hotbed for graft. Yeah. That was another big inspiration, actually. Um, that whole kind of West London, Labrook Grove, Latimer Road, that was a big oh, inspiration. That, yeah, that whole area, to me, just bleeds that, just the scene. It's yeah, like, to me, it's kind of, I don't know, I don't know, I could be wrong, but to me, it's the kind of the epicentre at that time for Graf, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So many spots under the Westway, you know, Ackland Play Centre. Oh, oh, oh. It was like a bit like Wastelandy as well back then as well. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. One in, one out kind of environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which, which, was, way, which was all, yeah. all part of it. Yeah, and and so many videos that you'd see, like drum and bass videos, you know what I mean? And they'd always have those places and you were just yeah. you did feel like you were yeah, walking yeah. in the fucking mecca like, like the footpath that goes over westbourne park <laughs> tracks that's just yeah all the spots just crazy yeah. just crazy and when you talk about breathing the air and 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 not no and and being in the same proximity of right downstairs um of one of the um one of the uh, i saw just now yeah 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 and he'd done it, he, he, he done it 4 30 in the afternoon did you really yeah, yeah, i saw that just yeah. down there yeah Mad. Yeah, because the shot was all graphed up before, wasn't it? With yeah. the hearts. He just did it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, a, that's a hot one. That's a hot one. Super <laughs> hot. That's hot as fuck. I'm like, dude. I mean, it's kind of good that maybe they didn't bump into each other. Yeah, <laughs> He'll be, yeah. be up here having a cup of tea. Yeah. <laughs> Should have got him up for a podcast. Well, that's right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right, let's get it into it. Right. So, like, the Scholar and Chang era. I mean, it's, it, was, it, it was just like a dynamic. But you also rolled with a bunch of other people, which, which to me, in my mind, they were kind of from different, they were from different crews, different walks of craft life yeah right it, it was definitely like a a big um mix mash mix mash whatever the word is mm. um but yeah we started th that whole started from going down at kew gardens grundy at kew i think at first it was was it blink and blink and gash and tense we met them and um and they were going yard that night so we kind of tagged along mm. and that was a br and that was the first sort of kind of bit of steel we did with them and that's kind of when we started hanging around with like touch and all those guys and just mm. doing more yards more tracks more just mm. more everything. Mm. And that's where we kind of started kind of delving out a little bit more. And Mace era. That's yeah, that Mace's was a bit after. Or... Yeah, that Mace, we started doing bits with Mace after that. That was the f kind of first bit with Touch and Blink and all those guys. Right. And then, um, and then we started LWS with Mace. There you go. A few years later. And that's when. Yeah. The things was a lot more serious in the later years. At the start, the start of it, it was very much um, just kind of go out with... I don't know, you might not have any paint, you might borrow some paint from someone, you might, you'd be just, mm. just kind of whatever happens, happens. There was no real plan. Really? It was a rough plan, but it could often deviate from... With, with T as well? That would be with Blink and yeah, T and all those Yeah, guys? mainly, yeah, most yeah. Uh, kind of bits I did with those guys, yeah, I'd say. How mad. Um, why was it unorganised? It was just like growing up into I think it? just growing up. Yeah. I think just growing up. Yeah. I remember once, um, where was it? It was like Woodford, I think. We went up there... And um, and like a lot of the end of the line yards, they're quite leafy, quite suburban suburb. They're quite you know quite like mm. leafy streets and stuff. And um, we're trying to get over a fence to get to the yard fence, and then you know those kind of wooden slatted fences. I was climbing mm. over it, and it just went dup, 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 like slap, slap, slap by slap, like breaking, 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 oh, making shit. like the biggest noise in a in the quietest area. So so already it was on top sort of thing. Mm. And everyone was just laughing. That's how it was just like no one really sort of cared about it. It was kind of very um, just. Yeah, not really caring about That's getting really caught, caring. I suppose. That's mad. Yeah, and then we got to the fence, I remember. And normally to cut a hole in the yard fence, you've got to, it takes ages and you just cut a little hole. You don't mm. cut a big hole because it takes so long. But this this particular yard, I don't know why, <laughs> the whole the whole fence panel, uh, there must be three metre by three metre fence panel, we've just been held on by um by like cable ties. So we just cut the cable ties and literally the whole thing fell down and we had this kind of massive walkway into the yard. <laughs> just 
it was just like never happened before. It just mad. red carpet. Yeah, no, it was like that. It was like gleaming Narnia in the yard, like trains gleaming. Guys must have been like, did this just fucking actually happen? To yeah, all? no, it was mad. It was mad. So that was yeah, good for when we got chased out as well. You didn't have to wait for someone to get out. You could just all run out together. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which was, um, yeah, that was a mad one. I think that's probably the scariest aspect when I've you know had conversations with everyone about it. I mean, teachers one was insane. Some of the stories he was telling us, right? But the idea of like getting chased out that's like peak that's like so intense and you think that doing the reverse of what you did going in initially would yeah. be would apply yeah but i'm pretty sure when you're having to scoot the fuck out yeah. you're not thinking about what you nah. did i mean at those times you kind of you just expected to get chased out it was really? kind of yeah just like a norm just because we were so kind of loud and not really caring about what we were doing really? um I remember that particular night, we got chased out on the streets and all BTs on the streets. We had to get back on the tracks. I mean, I think we must have walked to Hainault, which is like four or five stops through tunnels. I remember thinking, like, oh, it'd be great to be kind of... Back in bed. No, well, no. <laughs> they're like bombing. We left all our paint. We couldn't really bomb. Oh, so you could have gone and carried yeah, on just going Yeah, but we didn't have any paint. And we walked Jeez. and walked and walked until the first train started running. I remember never, because we didn't get flicks because we got chased out got a train back to the yard, went in the yard, broad daylight and got pictures. I was like, fucking legend. Crazy, yeah, wow. Yeah. I was like, no, you're not doing that. He goes, I'm doing it. And he did. So wow. Fair play to him. That's a, yeah, good for him. That's wow. a crazy one. See, these stories littered with nostalgia. And I mean, one of the things, the reasons why you're on here now is to define your stories and, and tell, you know, a, a, a gloss of A to Z about what, the, down for documentation purposes. Yeah, yeah right? exactly. Yeah. feels like it's an area of graph. Um, Particularly in the time in which you were painting prolifically, like again the Scotland Chang era, um, you were on your own vibe, and I don't think there's many other people out there of your genera our generation yeah. that kind of, that was there for the for that dub era, yeah. the crazy dub era weren't associated with DDS that weren't like yeah, maybe, do you know what I'm yeah. saying I'm sure if I think about it there were a few other people that were doing bits at that time but my mind's just mm. can't think far back but yeah but there wasn't it was predominantly that TKS DDS yeah. there were, it was before ATG it was before those yeah it was yeah, you yeah. kind of I remember you had the big you would curl that G around. You would flip. You'd create a tongue out of the. Den. Yeah, I always, always like movement. In yeah, my letters. you had the whole. Yeah. It was almost like a, t a tail in every letter. That was definitely inspired. That that definitely inspired a lot of other people, didn't it? I, I don't know. I hope so. Maybe I hope. Um, I, I believe hope I had so. some sort of some sort of inspiration out there. But yeah, I do. We should start with the G because the G had the most kind of flavour. I thought I'd start with the last letter first and then kind of work backwards. Which everyone used to take the piss out of me for, but hold on. So you'd go f back to, f I, to front. I'd, yeah, I'd start with the G because the G had the most kind of flavour to it, and then I'd try and mould all the other letters around that kind of flavour that I had with the G. That's amazing because yeah. now when I think about your pieces, there was it did feel it, like it's ruled by the G. <laughs> front it heavy, is, yeah. yeah, it is. No, it is, right, no, yeah, it's like a car. It's got the, the the things up front, and the rest is just. You know, it reminds me of. <gasps> You know the Hot Wheels? Yeah, with the, with the big engines poking out yeah, the front and dude. all that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought of that, but yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's a good comparison, yeah. yeah. Love it. <laughs> Smashed it, Chang. Come on. Come on. See, this is that this is that childhood thing, right? You know. Yeah. You yeah. probably didn't even realise that or didn't realise it at the time. Yeah. But you were actually doing things in reverse, so the things that you were doing stood out. I, yeah, the, I mean, there was no plan to even mm. to to stand out or to get up as such, or to there was no kind of plan to. Oh, we're going to do this and we're mm. going to smash it. It was just kind mm. of starting out. I like this. This is fun. Met this person. That's fun. And we just kind of um, went yeah. off down the road of graph. And then I used to see a lot of um, like heavy, you know, in your style, Chang, old cars were pretty much would. Just dubbed, it was just dubbed out. Yeah, it's mainly dubbed. I never really did that many pieces, a few pieces actually, but oh, yeah, mainly so dubbed. I still there's love... a couple that, are, that ring in my head yeah. when I think about it. Yeah, I, yeah really. I just love silver. It's just a silver in a nice hot place, hands down, kills a nice, nice, beautiful piece in a not so hot place. I don't know, yeah. there's something about how they got up there and, and the shit they went through to get it up there. It's kind of, yeah. Oh, so it's like, more about the. The event of getting to for the... me, yeah, I think so. And there has to be style with it as well, of course. Yeah. But um, but for me, I get I got 
I get buzzing when I see something in a you know, like a hot rooftop or a train or a, uh, yeah, that, that really gets me going. And where you were, you know, when you think of that queue, Richmond, um, was it, where, where's the other area? There's a couple of near Purley, um, Putney, sorry, those kind of areas. The overgrounds, they all, it's all rooftop business. Yeah, isn't it, really? yeah, yeah. There's loads around there. Yeah. Like Gunnersbury around that sort of area as well. Yeah, um, that's right. Yeah, yeah. No, it was good. It was good. It was good times. Yeah. What's the craziest roof, rooftop you ever done? Um, I never really did that many rooftops in England, actually. Shit's scary, isn't it? I went, and I can't climb. I'm the, I'm the world's shittest <laughs> climber in the world. <laughs> help me up, help me up. Yeah. <laughs> I did a rooftop in Brazil, actually, weirdly enough, um, which was quite fun to do. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I never really did that many rooftops. I remember I remember that time Rest was smashing rooftops. Ugh. That was kind of my era. Yeah, that's Absolute, right. Like early go. ATG stuff. Yeah, it. smashed rooftops. Early ATG, man. <gasps> They just they they were they were going so hard. People were hating it. Yeah, <laughs> they were and they were loving I loved it. All the the hate. I loved all the hate. <laughs> yeah. They got it brilliant, yeah, yeah. and they just turned that into just you know kind of like kind of fed off that hate, which is brilliant. And then all the love came. From yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, mad love. Who did you roll with most when you went to do, you know, when you went on missions? Who was it that you were rolling with most? Who was it? Mainly Scholar, Blink, Touch, Gash, all those SB guys, um, Tents. Yeah. Main, yeah. If you look at all my old old trains track sides, it's yeah. it's ninety percent with those guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then later on it would be with Mace um, and people like that, yeah. and Catch as well. Catch, I kind of did a lot of stuff with. Crazy, later. crazy stories were more at the start. Really? Yeah. Also, like what you know that 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 early stage. Give, early... Some, give us some of them. Give us some fucking. Madness. There was one 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 night that sticks in my mind where, you know how you saying you go out with people that you might not ever see again in your life and, you, and you're going on a night that you'll remember for the rest of your life and you won't ever see these people ever again. I always thought that was quite, that was quite nuts. Ooh. This one night, there was like 17, 18 writers. Yeah. Obviously people had called each other and we'd all met up yeah. um, to do a layup and to get to the layup, there were like 17 of us, so to get to the layup, there's tracks here and there's tracks up here and the layup's down there. We all had to go down like one by one, climb up the slip embankment onto the other tracks and we were like the last people going up there and I remember just looking down the tracks when we got up onto a bit where the layout was and just seeing this train and seeing like 18 writers painting a train, the fumes coming up. <sighs> so by the camera that day, it would yeah. just been the, just such an iconic shot. And, and like, unluckily for me, as soon as I got to the train, put on my first seat, then we got raided and all got chased out. So, but I always think of that, that vision when I was looking down, seeing 18 writers painting a train. It was quite atmospheric, you know, with the yard lights and, mm. the, and, the, and the steam coming off from the paint. Oh, my God. But, um, yeah, it's like a mental picture, isn't it? That's what I really regret, not, not having photos. But we didn't really have phones with photos back then. We didn't really, no. didn't really have cameras, no, really, no, no. apart from disposable ones. No, no, that's right. I mean, that just sounds like such a... I mean, we were in retrospect, of course, you yeah, understand. You, know, of course. I mean, you don't really paint anymore, do you? You're not, no, you're, not, not really. I mean, no. I, do, I do a few bits here and there, yeah, but not, not no. really anything. Those, that era, I think, is, uh, is marred with that unfortunate te lack of technology because there's so many amazing yeah, things but, but it kind of makes it a bit more mysterious as well yeah it does yeah where yeah it's nice instagram everything's documented but it's quite nice to have that period in folklore although it would be nice to see photos of stuff from back then but yeah, yeah. all the insides and stuff and yeah, yeah. oh i'll be just Oh, you see it every so often, you know, Digital Jungle or, you know... You're yeah, Digital Jungle was the one back in the day. Well, that was, the, you know... <laughs> Someone's brought that back out online, I think. You can see all the all the old pages on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, bro, like, it's it's mad. I mean, now you've got UK Frontline that, mm. you, that is just hammering things that they're being sent. And people are actually more... They do the job for writers, you know, they're there just yeah. to film. Like, yeah, not even the actual writer that's done it. Yeah. Other people will post their stuff, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just it's it's amazing, and and there feels it feels like there's more of a tolerance. What towards graph? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely. That's what back in the day. What drew me to it is there wasn't that tolerance towards it. Like mm. I remember wanting to do graph in my art and my art GCSE or whatever it was, and they said no, you can't do graph. It was a big thing to do graph. You couldn't do it. But now they're teaching it. It kind of shows how much. Things have changed. Oh wait, so they're teaching. They're teaching. I graph. think a, a friend's got a kid, and they were teaching them about Banksy in their art class. Like what? It's crazy how much. That's it's kind mad. Of, yeah, how it's turned from being a thing that you would never get taught to a thing that gets taught in like you know twenty years. Yo, I am what? 
are they teaching them? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Hold yeah. On. yeah, that's a, that's another story. But. Yeah, I mean, maybe slightly delusional if 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 they're trying to sell the dream of like a million pounds. Yeah, I'm sure some kids buy that as well. Don't yeah. kids don't buy? <laughs> kids, kids. Banksy's done some groundwork. You know what I mean? This shit doesn't just happen. Yeah, and if exactly, it does, exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, it doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. Do Do you have any um? Because obviously you're not, you 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 make a living, um, doing what you do. That's yeah. similarly associated with. Yeah, I, you know I mean, I actually got into my job, um, graphic design through. Um, that's why graph's such a great thing. It was through yeah. through someone I went yard with, met one night, and um, and I got a phone call. Oh, you need a graphic designer, and that's how I kind of got into what I'm doing now. And that's like you know, 18 years ago. So that's incredible. It's just it's, it 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 can be a force of good. Uh, people like portray it as a negative thing, but it's a you know, I've met a lot of good people and got a lot of good opportunities through through the craft world. That is the coolest shit I think I've heard on podcasts, <laughs> for real. If it doesn't stand testament that you do things for a reason and that good does come out. Yeah, of it. eventually. <laughs> How long ago was that? 14 years ago? No, say? about 18, 18, 19 years that ago. That is a insane. A long time ago and I'm still doing, still doing it because of that random night I went out and met that person. I can't some, believe that. That's yeah, amazing. Yeah, effect from it. Yeah. yeah. Some other stories. Yeah, loads of stuff like that's happened. I've, yeah. Do you think you've got to be ready for it when it shows up, when opportunity knocks? That's what people say. There's no such thing as luck, isn't it? It's opportunity mm. mixed with mixed with being ready for it yeah. at the right time. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think so. I think yeah. you're right, yeah. If you're not ready for it, you're not yeah. going to take it up. I mean, how many artists, musicians, fashionistas... If I sit there on the fence waiting. Yeah, yeah. But you've kind of got to make your moves and work within the direction in which you feel in your heart you're meant to be doing. I think, and just always keep on going. Even when you think it's not right, if you have that kind of ambition, just keep on going and keep on going. Yeah. Eventually. Eventually. Was he, what did your parents think back in the day? Oh, um, <laughs> my dad used to hate graph. I used to work with him on Portobello <laughs> Road. I used to come back when I was painting. I used to come back covered in paint, ready to work on the market store. And I... Oh, you had a market store? Yeah, yeah, oh. Portobello Road, yeah. Is that, what, is that what got you into London a lot of times? Yeah, that's what got me into... It was a big push of my inspiration, being around yeah. Portobello Road in that area, seeing crazy. all the new tags on the shutters and stuff, and mm. all the local writers around there. That was, that was good to see. Mm. So, so now he used to hate it, and my mum... Used to hate it as well. She used to... Then it's great. Yeah, it was a, <laughs> there was not a lot of love for graph in our household. But then as time's gone on, you know, she's seen what what good it's done, and it's um, yeah. yeah no. That's what I mean. Because like, I remember my dad he used to say to me, "Stop fucking people, stop I'm not swearing." My dad yeah. never swore, but he would just be like, "Stop beatboxing, stop beatboxing." And if I had a quid for every time he said it, yeah, you know what I mean. But now, you know, as soon as I started getting my paychecks in, it's like, Does he like it now? Beatbox right? more, beatbox yeah. more, yeah. beatbox yeah. more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's true, isn't it? Like, as soon as... You know what I mean? Because I don't think they maybe see our ambition, how much we're into it, and it's not just a little fad, you know, we're going to go through with this. Yeah. They're probably just worried about us. Yeah, I think that is ultimately what it is, isn't it? I mean, if my son said I want to be a graffiti writer, I'd I'd think of all the... I don't know. (laughs) Probably think of all the bad stuff first, but, yeah, I don't know. Would you stop him? Would you stop the kids? I I wouldn't stop him, but I'd want to guide him in the right direction. (laughs) Is, yeah, can, I, I do ask. Stop, I do no, ask I a lot of my friends that. Him. Definitely wouldn't stop. You wouldn't. Him. No, I don't think so. Just brought so much good to me. So, hmm. yeah. yeah, it's a double-edged sword, isn't it? The, the characters that you meet. That's yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, it is. Yeah. That's what I love about it as well. You meet people from all walks of life, and you've all got that common interest, and you all hmm. get on. And well, most of the time, anyway. Mm-hmm. Do you think there's a different side to you? I mean, we're seeing we're seeing a, a charming man. Yeah, I'm saying, so. but would you, do you think there was a different Chang when you were going out back in the day? Do you think there was a more of a, an aggressive side, a more of a anarchic side to oh, you? In terms of writing, yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. I was more. Once I started, I was more. There was that hunger and anger to get up, yeah. and that kind of maybe took over the kind of you know nicer bits. I'd want to get up, I want to get yeah. up and do this and do that. Yeah. So yeah, it was definitely a kind of a. Maybe not an angle, maybe a hunger, a hunger. Really? Yeah. Like a driver? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a kind of Mission Impossible kind yeah. of attitude. What was your, because I see your, um, you're in that kind of world of like vamp. Maybe you're a little bit later than that. Yeah, because vamp was kind of get, but he's the same age as us, so maybe, 
What were your influences? What who was My, who was your influences? Uh, uh, that uh, when I started writing, I just, it made influence. I'd say Teach, Zombie, yeah. uh, DDS, TKS, PHM, all those guys. Um, also, there was there was a, a crew called OTB, like Corpse and Fink. And there was a guy called, that used to write Pang. I'm not sure if he used to write of OTB, but he used to write P-A-N-G, Pang. That rings bells. He was, I used to really love Really clean, stuff. dude. Yeah, Real I used clean, to love right? his stuff. And I think I might have taken a bit of inspiration from my tag from that, I think. That's possibly. sick. <laughs> but nice no, to Pang. love his stuff, yeah. No one really talked about him. You don't really hear no, about no, him. No, but he well, was, he just he was to up. Me. He was up yeah. big time back in the day. Yeah, and he used to get, well, that's a, kind of the same thing with Mace, I feel. Yeah. No, yeah. it's true, yeah. He yeah, kind well, of... He's not really doing stuff anymore, but he's, he's absolutely smashed it. Yeah. Absolutely smashed it. I can't it. think of anybody else. He's real versatile and quite a, a lone star as yeah, well. Yeah, right? yeah, he was. He was. He did his own thing, mm. which was good. Mace. Yeah, hold okay. tight mace. Big up mace. Um, you were in an era that really was like dub dominant. Uh. Yeah, it was just silvers, silver, silver, silvers. Yeah. A few pieces here and there, but. What was your theory? What, what was yours and Scholar's theory? What was the crew's theory on, on standing out? Um. I suppose just big and more and just just more, I suppose. Mm. Just more, more, more. That was it. How far would you go? How far would you go for that more? How far would I go? As far as I could without, I suppose, getting arrested or getting too tired that you can't go on anymore. Mm. I remember going on like track walks for you know, all night long and then doing stuff the next day and then just so you can't, you can't physically do it anymore. Mm. Or someone's been arrested or you get chased or... Remember How long the track walks? Like, what, miles and oh, miles? Oh, miles and miles and miles. Like, like hours and hours and hours. Mm. The point where you kind of get a bit bored. It's like, <laughs> yeah. There's, like, massive gaps between anything you can hit. So it's just, oh, come on. Really? There's more walking really? and writing going on. Because I remember, yeah, because that's the thing. I, I remember, like, you know, you'd be on the... It's particularly, like, Farringdon, on those lines of Metropolitan and things yeah. like that back in the day. Me and my mates probably did what you used to do. And we, we used to sit there and just, like... Yeah. Looking back and forth yeah. like like a bunch of numpties, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. like, um, I still literally hurt my neck like yeah. <laughs> just doing that all the time. It, man. <laughs> Metler's headbang, hip hoppers look left. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Borderline window lickers. <laughs> <laughs> totally. It's just wrong. And uh yeah, just the the levels of coverage that you know, and I used to think to myself, man, like I remember I used to, you know, do promotional stickering for my... my I remember seeing that shit. stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know, not to any scale of, like, I wouldn't even c- c- consider myself that in, the, in that league of um, of coverage. It was more like when I got to, like, my, maybe my sixth sticker yeah. of sticking up and even, in like, in a venue. <laughs> I'd yeah. be like, oh, fucking hell. <laughs> But you guys were just like doing it, doing it, doing it, and I always just it. I, I always found it remarkable that over a, such a long period of space, you, you just relentlessly kept going. Yeah, that's what I used to like to see. Though you, you like get on a train, um, and you just see a tag, and then a tag, and then like ten stops later, you'd still see that tag. It's just like just the just the repetitiveness of it all. So yeah. I love that. Yeah, just seeing that, seeing how someone's walked a whole track. So it's just I don't know if if just writers notice that or if. Other people that aren't into graph notice that, but I suppose uh, we were just doing it for other writers. I think. I think that is the, the the aim of the game. I always think I was. My dad actually said something to me the other day. He came back from I think it was a Tottenham game, and he said. <laughs> he asked me of all people, "Guys, got a lot of graffiti, isn't there?" I'm like, "Yes, Dad." What's it all about? Sam? Yeah, 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 about? totally. <laughs> dad, have you? Did you? Do you know what I'm doing? <laughs> what do we know? What's going on here? Listen like, to a few of the podcasts, Dad. It's the first time I actually. It's the first time my dad actually said anything about graffiti ever. And I just it just struck me. I was like, wow, so how long did it take? For, yeah, you know, that's, a long, going, that's a long time. That's yeah. like years and years. Yeah, how long did it take you to... And I know, it's, no, it's just his generation. Yeah, of course. Maybe he just wasn't watching graffiti. Some people are just totally oblivious to it. Oblivious, they don't yeah. even notice it. Yeah. Which In fact, my girlfriend you? was as well. Until she met me, she just didn't didn't have a clear about really? graphic. Yeah. yeah, it's weird though because it it stands out so much to me. I know. Maybe because it's on my radar. I don't know, but it's just yeah. Some people just don't don't get it or don't want to get it. No, but I think maybe it's how it's some of its conduit, like the I love that word. Is <laughs> is a good word. <laughs> strong word. Um, hashtag in <laughs> yeah, my head. Hashtag conduit. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag conduit. It's. I think a lot of it is because it's part of our cultural psyche. You know what I mean? Well, because we're into hip hop and uh, yeah, the yeah, music. I think, yeah, I think that's that's a big bit of it for me. Yeah, because I was always into hip hop and it just 
you know, you were with graffiti writers, you were around graffiti on album yeah. covers, on yeah. on videos. It was always around. Yeah. And through reading Hip Hop Connection as well. I mean, that's how I got into that's kind it. of seeing graph. So yeah, it's definitely a, a big link. They used to have the classified section in the back of Hip Hop yeah, Connection. Yeah, what was that? Dude, that's where but, how I met a lot of people. Was that where people used to put their addresses and you could write to them? Yeah. And, yeah. Get your, you know, I used to meet so many MCs and DJs that way. Oh, that's mad. And we used to I remember seeing London. it, the little, the little squares, and you used to write <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, dude. And I, I, I used to use you pen pals, you know what I mean? Before emails, motherfucker. You know, this used to be the classified section where if you wanted an MC or a DJ... Yeah, that's DMs yeah. back in the day, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, for <laughs> real. I used to meet, that's, and that's why I used to go to Bongos to meet up with these yeah, people and hang yeah. out. But you didn't realise at the time that that person you just hit up was Rodney... Roots Maneuver. Yeah, yeah, You didn't yeah. realise that MK was going to be there. Yeah. You didn't know that Chang was going to be yeah. there. I mean, you DJed as well, right? You, you... I DJed, not hip-hop. Yeah. I got into hip-hop, but then I started playing Garage. So I met quite a well-known DJ. Actually, th again, through Graf. And, right. um, I kind of got into the Garage scene and started playing out. Mm. I used to play on Pirates and stuff and, and clubs. Um, mm. Yeah, so that was all. That's another... That's another, it's another podcast. Another, gra <laughs> another Graf good influence that's yeah. kind of... I've got, which is yeah, which is good. I always felt like the pirates radio scene and the graph scene. I don't know why it felt like it was hand in hand. It was just, it was just like the the raw side of music. Yeah, and uh, I get why you say because I think I think a lot of DJs and MCs were into graph or wrote, mm. um, and a lot of people that were into hip hop got into the garage scene as well. They did big time. Um, so that's probably where the crossover was. Yeah, and that's what made it kind of. That's where the UK scene in graph really gained its own arms. It felt like, you know, Garage was popping back then. You yeah. Know, the JD Sports Air Max. Yeah, and yeah, like 97, 98. That was, I kind of hold that yeah. era in the same era as a whole, you know, like you look through golden glasses of the graph era. I looked through the same era for the, for the whole Garage scene. That was just, it was just such a new, a new thing that was never around before. It felt so fresh and. So fresh. That kind of skip on the beat and everything was just like, it was so. It was. It was just <laughs> raw and new, and yeah. I kind of imagine it to be how it was in New York when hip hop started, and yeah. that kind of newness. Yeah, I mean it's probably totally different, but that's how I imagine it in my head. That kind of that like a new scene emerging, and to be part of it was quite. Yeah, it actually does my Swede that it's not about so much as it was because there ain't. If you'd have, if you'd have dropped a genre like that right now, yeah, there'd be nothing like it. No, I know, but There's it's weird. Like it's it. weird. It's just kind of. Yeah. Not as popular. Whereas like drum and bass jungle, that's kind of still there. It's still around. And I don't know why that is. No. Not that drum and bass is around. That's fucking awesome. But I but, suppose Gary's yeah. kind of morphed into grime and then the whole drill thing. I don't know. It's kind of yeah, maybe legs. gone down that route. Yeah. A little bit. But that's where Graf kind of followed through. I'm speaking as Zonk, Cold Tight Zonk. Like, and he was, we were talking about, for me, like, it, the UK Graf reflected the, the order of the day in terms of music and yeah. tastes and, it just felt like it was, it had its own thing. No one gave a shit, I don't think anybody gave a particular shit about the music, but I think it was more like Graf had its, it was had its own independency from hip hop. Yeah, definitely. When I used to play out at, um, at some, at certain clubs in London, it was full of writers, was it? full of yeah. writers. And there were MCs that were writers that were MCing yeah. up there. Mm -hmm. It was, yeah, a lot of writers used to come to those dudes. So yeah, yeah it did have its, it, it kind of broke away from that traditional hip hop Graf thing, I think. Yeah. And even like the rave culture as well, even a bit before that, I think. Yeah, that's right. There were a lot of writers that were mm. into that sort of thing. A lot of writers got into flyer designing and stuff like that yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, pre-laptop graphic, you know. Like kind of early, mid-90s kind of yeah. deal, yeah. yeah. Whole type pairs all day. Bad boy artists yeah. on them old school flyers. Yeah, okay. yeah, fucking sick. But yeah, like you say, you've got into the graphic designs and things are kind of moving on in that world. Mm. And... Uh, Instagram is totally enabling like the the scene to flourish. Um, do you think it? Do you think it's moved in a direction? Obviously, to to satisfy your job roles. Obviously, yeah. it, it's it's progressively yeah. moving in that direction. But as a as a hardcore scene, do you think it's gone in the right direction for for your mind? At the age I'm at now, yeah, I do. I like it because it's yeah. just easy to see and it's good. But if I was this age, no, sorry, if I was young now getting into it, yeah. I, I think it's lost a little bit, maybe. If it's fake. Yeah. But for me now, doing my job and stuff, I love love Instagram. It's kind of why yeah. I started kind of painting again as well, kind of yeah. putting up on Instagram and stuff. Yeah. Just to make it kind of known that you're there. Yeah. 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 It, it's, it's, a very, it's a very easy thing, isn't it? Yeah. Compared to... 
But what did you want at the end of the day? What did writers really want? They wanted their scene, their shit to be seen. They wanted, yeah, fame, acknowledgement, I suppose, notoriety. Yeah. Um, just to do one better than the last person did, yeah. I think, or to smash it more than the other person did. Yeah, yeah I think that was the main, the main drive. Yeah. Uh, favorite, favorite um, place to paint. Favorite place, legal or illegal? Either or. Either or. Back in them days when you were doing it. Back in the it. days. Favourite. Probably the track size at Westbourne Park as you go into Paddington, I'd say. I, <laughs> I remember once, you know, that, that was that big fume that was there. I remember once, right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do, do a big dub next to it. Of course you did. And I was like, yeah. I, was like, <laughs> I got up there and I was like, fuck it. You know? And I, I kind of reached as high as I could. And there's like a little ledge at the bottom that you can stand on so you can get a bit higher yeah. than usual. And I thought, I thought, yeah, I've done all right. Um, and I got the train the next day and I just, I literally could hardly see it. It was just really? dwarfed by the few. I was like, fuck it out. That's one of those like, fail moments. But, um, but actually, at the same time, like anyone that put anything around that spot at that time when Fume and Bosch it, Bosch as well, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, there was in, Bosch, there was a big zonk there. Oh my God, there yeah. There was a fat Sam there, I think, before yeah. that by Elk. Um, yeah, that's right, yeah, that's yeah. right. Oh, there, there was an iron there, I remember, a big iron. There's so much that shit went down on that just ledge. Just so much notoriety. Around the area, yeah. It was just like if you even got, if you even had your name, it gives smalls it was there. You were part, you were held as, held as like part of the... You know what I mean? That yeah. London scene. Yeah, it was like, yeah. boom. But you had to go big to be noticed there. Like, yeah. You really had to. Yeah. And it just didn't work out for you. <laughs> it didn't work out. I remember feeling so disappointed going home on the train. I'm like, fucking, I really wanted to a big dub yeah. there. And it just, yeah. But you know, you win some, you lose some. The levels of anxiety when you're in any like heavy populated place, that must drive you insane, especially when you're looking out for... Yeah, it kind of does. But then you get to the point where you just sort of turn off yeah. You know you're in a hot spot, but you kind of got to turn off to concentrate. Otherwise, you'll be like, your lines will be all over here. You'll be worried. You kind of it's this weird this like switch that turns off in you, yeah. just to kind of ignore. You know, there's stuff around. You have to ignore it really? and get on with it. How deep does it go? I mean, you've got to know your walk. You got to know where you're going and shit, right? At the start, we didn't have a clue. We just kind of get on and just walk and walk and walk and just see where we get out. Try and find a way to get out. You might not be able so to get out. So not even paint. You just be. Oh no, we'd, we'd paint, we'd paint, but we just kind of we wouldn't have any exit strategy as such. We just yeah. kind of just get out where we could go out. Because to me, from the outside looking in, majority of the times in the train, it just feels like a uh, a clusterfuck of heavy. It's not a good word. <laughs> Hashtag cluster. <laughs> I mean, can I have a podcast giving the vocabulary for twenty twenty, baby? Um, you know, it's a clusterfuck of like different sized. Never gonna get out of this <laughs> walls, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then there's a drop there. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean? yeah, like, yeah. I just, I just couldn't deal with it in the dark. I would just absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I loved, and that's what I loved about it. like those those spots where there's a little ledge and there's a little drop, and you know where well, you've been there, and you know how hard it is to paint on there, and just the kind of just the the heartbeat levels to get yeah. to that. It's just just never. It feels like everything, everything looks uncertain because you don't know where the real ground is. No, I know, and it's pitch black, or you jump into a bush that you think. It's just up to there, and it's just about ten foot deeper, and I just it fries my brain, bro. Yeah. Like, you guys are fucking mad. <laughs> a lot of you, <laughs> yeah. it's amazing, uh, and I think that's actually that's one of the biggest appeals as someone watching is just the curiosity, Bill. And and I don't think it's I don't think any conversation will do that justice. You ju- you you when you see the end thing being the way it is. It's just, um, it's mine. It's m- in terms of you doing it and then seeing it. No, in finished. terms of me not doing it and seeing oh, it. Oh, okay. It's just yeah, like, yeah, okay. oh, that is just all those things. Going back to what we were saying yeah. about standing in front of a tag. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like to, to even be like on a platform seeing the train come in or seeing across, you seeing the, the, the track side yeah. and just being like, yeah, like they were. That's what I mean about how, you know, you, you kind of view graph and its natural element. It's got so much more power and kind of. Wowness about it than yeah. seeing it on on a screen. Yeah. I'm not knocking Instagram or anything because it's because yeah. it's good. But yeah, it's just kind of I love seeing it in situ. Yeah. Oh yeah. Even Hall of Fames as well. You know, even the new cats that are coming through. It's like to see it cl- up close. To see. I mean, I did get a newfound perspective when um, when I I did like my first kind of like let's see what this paint can do. Kind of yeah. kind of 
piece. Did you very shame, did you? No, never. No. Never, no, this was only like a couple of weeks ago. Oh, okay. I just gave okay. it a shot. Okay. Well, I got to the point where I was like, yo, like, I can only have a certain amount of conversations. I need to take, I need to take initiative uh, just so I get a more close-up perspective. I just needed something else yeah, to kind of... Yeah. By doing it, I, I think I, yeah, I definitely developed a, a higher appreciation of, you know, when you're up close to a, a Chang piece, right? Um, the w- the way in which you operate the can is all determined on what's going on right yeah, there. there is, yeah, that's what I mean when I said you just have to just switch off to any paranoia. You've got to just turn it off and just concentrate on what you're doing, mm. or else you'd be just all over the shop. Is it level as in? Is it, is there a real kind of spiritual kind of? Uh, the, the, head, there is a definite space. switch off. You notice that switch off. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you can't do it, but it's nice when you just right I'm switching off now. I know it's all hot around me, but I'm just gonna switch off and really? you know, let the chips fall where they may. Do things slow down when you're painting? Maybe I don't know. No, 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 not really. I'm trying to get into so. the mind. Yeah, I'm trying yeah, to get into the mind. Yeah, I've not really thought about it actually. Does it? Be, it's you... been a while since I've had that switch off. So yeah. Next, if I do get it again, I'll. Yeah. I'll make sure. Note to self. Note to, yeah. Not note to yeah. I do switch. I mean, it may seem like trivial, funny questions, but th- it, it, really trying to get into the mind of it. Really yeah. trying to get an understanding about what the, what the mindset is when you're, when you're in that place and you're in that fucking metropolis. You know what I mean? You're, yeah. You're having a to lo- cover up and it's just intense. A lot of the times you're with other people, which I think, I think lessens the paranoia when there's a whole group of you you can kind of switch off easier because you're all together. Don't you worry about them? Uh, well, I think if you're all together, you're kind of less... There's, I don't know. There's, there's, it's weird because if, if there's a lot of you, you're probably going to get noticed more, but there's less chance of you getting nicked, I think. Because if you're on your own, you're a bit, you're a bit more conspicuous. Hmm. But, yeah, I don't know. It's hard to switch off, though, when you're on your own. Really? Because, yeah, the paranoia levels are a bit... I get it. A bit higher. I get it. That's why I rate writers that do stuff on their own, especially yards on their own, track sides on their own. It's like... Yeah, that's I've never a, done a yard of my own. That's like that's a love of adrenaline sport yeah, in itself. That's <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, when you know we're not advocating it or condoning it, but what one thing we are saying is like there's there is a level of mindset which I I that it's a different discussion. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. To go out there and do what you do solitarily. Yeah, wow. I, I think you have got to be a, a a certain type of person. Mm. to do that yeah. crazy and very motivated mm. but nice no, it's, it's all and to do it well as well I've seen I've seen people that go on yard on their own and just everything's clean mm. nice there's no mm. drips it's mm. like fucking hell you're just mm. mad do you think doing the graphics and the things you're doing now mm. do you think that was an a, 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 not a, not an exit of strategic oh I had to get out of this but you did say that coming towards the tail end of or when you got when you're career in graph yeah for want of a better term got to that the following cruise and it started getting serious and it started getting intense do you think it could have carried on like that i don't know why it stopped really it's weird i don't know what happened i think maybe people started having kids and i think maybe going out a bit more became more of a priority sometimes just going out you know i think i was that was for the tail end the tail end of my graph career is like the start of the DJing, so I kind of maybe prioritised that a little bit. It was always there, but I don't know, it just kind of just fizzled out, and then I'm not mm. doing it anymore. Mm-mm-mm. But it never leaves you? No, I still there. I, I, I still look I still look at stuff. I still want to do stuff. I think, oh, that'd be a good spot to do. Mm. Do you see some things and you're just like, oh, that spot looks good? Or you see something on Instagram and you're just like, ah. Or they, someone sends you a photo of yours from back in the day and you're like, shit, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. Does that, all yeah. that play in your mind? Yeah, you want to relive it again. All the time, all the yeah. time, yeah. Is that a youthful sport? You think it's a youthful sport? I think so. Mm. I think so. Okay. Yeah. It's easier to uh, to do it, to be motivated, to get away with it when you're younger, I think. Mm. I think. Yeah. But, yeah. but there's, still, there's still the old guys still still doing it. Mate. I'm sure. A lot of them are coming out. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I'm just Which is brilliant. It. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So do you reckon that'll be... Mate, it might yeah. be a little motivated. It might be. It might be. I love that. Know. At the start of the podcast, it was... <laughs> by the end of it. <laughs> Definitely. 100%. Yeah, I'm there. I'm, I'm out there. tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's yeah. been a fucking pleasure, my brother. Thank you, boss, for having me up. Yeah, man. Nice one. Yeah, more Respect. life to you, my man. You're safe, man. Wicked. The mighty Chang inside the place. Uh, never disappointing here on the Killer Cattle podcast. Share and share. Tell a friend to tell a friend. All right? Sharing's caring. And without fail... 
We're here every week doing it proper, all right? Stay lucky, people. Don't talk to any strange ones. Thank you, my brother. Safe, man. Peace. Peace. Peace.